Hey everybody, if you are looking for a game call that is elk, turkey, deer, predator calls, waterfowl calls, we highly recommend philpsgamecalls.com. Professional grade game calls made for every hunter. Welcome back to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Phelps Game Calls, with your hosts, David Crane and David Sandana. All right, everybody. Well, that is right. I am your host today, David Crane, and I am with Ian Comer. What's up, Ian? How are you doing today? What's up, brother? I'm tired. Just got off work. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> it's Monday night. So, um, Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with that. But yeah, man, so we're going to talk about the very first time I had my first archery hunt. You were pretty much on, this would have been your second hunt, and you were videoing for like the the group, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian is not a hunter, but he uh, has nothing against hunting or anything like that. No. Um, actually, he was trying to become or get his hunting license, but it's been hard to, like, do the walkthrough testing. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard to, to one, schedule time. Yeah. Um, I'm having those issues, too, with so. my son. So, <laughs> um, him doing the, the online course and then trying to find a day to do the, to do it is almost impossible. And it looks like I need to change something on this camera. Pause. This is this is really where the podcast starts. Dave trying to fix his. It's the try. lighting. <laughs> That's right. I'll do it in post. Whatever. We're just orange. Oh, my chair just shifted. <laughs> Let's scoot up. To, there we go. There we go. Now we're not as orange. Let's just get a little bit closer <laughs> to the right. lights over here. Oh, maybe it was just me. Yeah, maybe I'm just. We're not bit. as orange. That's, that's okay. Whatever. Well. Hey, maybe some some people like being Oompa Loompas, <laughs> all right? Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about the first time. It, it was my first archery hunt. It was back in 2012. So, I mean, it's been 12 years of archery hunting. And going into it, it was actually kind of weird. So um, I was talking with my buddy Will who is no longer with us now. He, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and I was like, hey, man, do you want to go on an archery hunt with me? Uh, one of the guys that I work with knows a spot where we can go. Uh, and he had ended up just moving over to eastern Washington and invited us on a deer hunt. So um, we ended up heading over to eastern Washington. But before all that, number one, <laughs> Will ended up not being able to go because he had military training. Um, so we couldn't back out of that. And then, um, David Sandana, who was, uh, the other host of the podcast, he was like, dude, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And that was basically our first time, um, hunting together. Um, so the season before that, I went on an archery hunt with, with Dave and I was rifle hunting that year. So I was just running around with him just yeah, running around with Dave yeah. <laughs> while he was archery hunting, which was fun. But this is the first time that we actually hunted together. We had never hunted together before that. And then uh, I asked uh, Ian, who is sitting here with me, and our and our buddy Josh to film the hunt, not knowing really like what we were getting into. Uh, I had I had hunted like two years prior to this, and it was rifle hunting, and this is my first time archery hunting. And I mean, going into it, we had no idea what we we're getting into number one i had never hunted the east side of washington no um well i take that back a couple months before that we were turkey hunting over there which didn't go good it was terrible <laughs> we were walking all over the place <laughs> to come to find out there was like no turkeys like in the vicinity of where we we're hunting mm -hmm. like we might have seen one turkey or something. Oh, by the way, we have a video playing in the background. This is just because uh, I tried to find the video. Because you lost it. Of <laughs> our deer hunt, and 
it got taken off of YouTube. You lost the only thing I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, I was scrambling for it. And I mean, it's, I mean, it's been a long time. I thought I may have had it on my computer, but it has been deleted. And yeah, it's gone forever. <laughs> and it was our first <laughs> ever uh, deer hunt filmed. And it was a successful hunt. I mean, fast forward, it was a successful hunt. But um, yeah, man, going into it, what did you, what were you expecting or what did you think about well, one, it cost me a lot of money because um, I was getting all of my camo because I didn't own any. <laughs> so, um, if anyone is wondering, uh, back in two, in 2012, I purchased Badland pants, which at, were at the time that was kind of like the top of the line, technology wise camo because it had like these like patches of re- like heat reflectors and cold dampeners. Basically, if it was cold outside, you wouldn't feel it. And if it was hot outside, you wouldn't feel it. It was just kind of the brand new thing. But 2012, I spent $280 on those pants. <laughs> <laughs> and now now I'm looking at, you know, kind of like the same kind of material. It's like, yeah, 150 you know, maybe 200 bucks. But yeah, it is what yeah, it pr- is. What it is. Well, and also, I, mean, I just bought like, are... fresh boots, yeah, like... brand new tops and jackets. Actually, I think I borrowed the jacket from you. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I you had a jacket. Either that or I may have borrowed one from, uh, Acasio. I can't remember. It's, it's, it was long. so long ago. Yeah, it's, like it we probably time. needed to do this podcast a year ago. Probably. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're all real fresh to everything. I think I had just gotten a bow. I already had camo and all that stuff. Um, I got a new pack for that hunt. Like I had a whole bunch of. Yeah. I just got New my stuff. bow that year also. Yep, yep. We were shooting Athens. Um, back mm-hmm. then, we were a part of the pro staff, actually. Um, yes. Back in 2012. And then I fell out because I was not getting anyone. <laughs> and also, I, I wasn't getting one into Athens. And then, uh, also, I wasn't purchasing anything from <laughs> Athens. I wasn't updating my pro staff uh, membership. <laughs> membership cause, I mean, I mean. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. Like all the arrows I ordered, I just ordered through you because you'd be ordering ordering arrows, so didn't have to pay shipping. Well, it was like I would order. Well, I mean, we're on the same pro staff, anyways, so it didn't really matter. But we, um, yeah, I would order them, and then either I would I would shoot them and not like them, and you would l- shoot them and then like them, and then I was like, they work just fine. Yeah, I was like, well, oh, I mean, with my bow within. Within thirty yards, I shoot flat with anything anyway. So if I was shooting, lo- if I was shooting close targets, I just use whatever arrow I have. <laughs> Except, hey, I still have a Beeman that's working just fine. Oh man, those those arrows. Those are... Beemans will uh, that Beeman will never die because <laughs> I I don't shoot it very often anymore. If I feel like I need to hit something, spot, I, I'll, dude, shoot, I'll shoot my Beeman. Toast in that thing. It no, it's still flex. There's no cracks. There's no breaking the the uh, uh, the wrap on it is still in. In good shape. Really? There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Dang. I, that's why I told and told uh I told uh Mike. I was like, this arrow will live forever. <laughs> I actually shot it I shot it into the dirt the other day and I was like, oh that's that's the beaming. Pulled the beaming out. Everything was fine. The tip was dented, but besides that. Yeah. Well that's a good arrow, man. <laughs> but um yeah, so when we were heading over to Eastern Washington, number one, we we're just kinda like pretty fired up that we're going, but it was it was this was after fired everybody up, was off. Fired work. up nonsense. No. No. Sandana said he's gonna be there at like four. We left at six for a freaking no, we I think we left later. I think oh, it was we left later at than seven that. for a four and a half hour drive. We knew we were going to need to stop for gas a couple times. We stopped in Yakima and those freaking dudes pulled out and we all thought they were going to start something. Do you remember that? Uh, no, I don't it was remember like, that one. It was like 10 o'clock. It was like right outside Goldendale. And and we had to stop off at this gas station. And there's a bunch of dudes <laughs> in this like janky looking car. And they are all like standing outside of it eyeballing us. I don't know if I We weren't even that. in camo. We were just in normal street clothes. I don't remember that only because I was... Um, that year, uh, Yakima was pretty much on fire. Uh, yeah. Remember that? Because yep. we were like... Dude, yeah, that's we, if that's a fire dragon, that's a fire dragon. Because it was just like all over this hillside, and it was back. It was actually back behind the military base, and um, that's why Will had to go in. He was actually a tanker at the time, but they were using the tanks to like stomp out the, the fire. That's fine. Yeah, and target practice too. They just blow the fire line up. Oh. 
So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, rest in peace. We'll miss you, bud. Um, but on our, on our way over there, so there was that incident. And then, um, as we're, as we're getting into, uh, the town that we're going into Goldendale, where my buddy lives, we, we show up at his house and Roy boy, <laughs> he comes out with like two bottles and he's like, Hey, you guys ready to party? And blah, blah, blah. And we're like, no, dude, dude. We, we just got off work. We're just trying to come in here and chill. We're going to be hunting the next day. Yeah. It's just like, dude, no. But I remember sleeping so unsoundly in that little living room. And I remember waking up in the morning and seeing Acasio was were halfway. We at, were we at Brett's house or were we at Josh's house? Now that I can't remember. That year we were at Josh's house. Was it? Yes. Because the second year we went to, we stayed at Brett's. At Brett's house. Yes. And that's when I was in that race car bed. <laughs> <laughs> so the first year we're all I like. I slept sp- on a cot. So I- <laughs> we're, we're spread out across this teeny little living room. I mean, it's. So the room that we're in right now is like n- not very big. And that was probably about the size of the living room. And imagine like six grown men in in this room yeah like it was it, it was crazy well luckily we only had to sleep for like four hours and then get up so it wasn't it was more like we just kind of chilled because i do remember that we all started yeah, taking we, yeah we got up pretty i remember we all started drinking when we when we saw it it happened really quickly i had i had a kraken 92 proof dark liquor you know and uh and we, as soon as we saw the room we we're like so where's where's that where's that ball of cracking you brought in? Um, <laughs> we went through. A, I think all of us went through a quarter of that really quickly, and then we all just sat down and kind of just passed out. Passed out. Yeah. So going into the morning, the morning was actually um, it was pretty fun. So we uh, Josh had us going out to this one. Um, Josh Roy had us going out to this this uh, area that he had scouted before, and. As we're driving in, so Ian, Ian and I, we knew that we were, so we kind of drove this area and it was in the dark. So we came up back up to this top and we kind of knew where we were going to jump out at. But Acasio is in the back like, dude, there's deer everywhere. Look right there, right there, right there. Like, dude, you might need glasses, man. Those are rocks. (laughs) I forgot about that. (laughs) I forgot about that. So there's all these rocks uh, on this like rolling, there's like rolling hills and they kind of like dip, dip way down, like down to the bottom. Into of a these freaking rivers. forested gully, basically. Yeah. It's kind of like it, the it, best it, way to describe it. And it's that. intense, but the rocks on the side can look like it's a deer. Like I understood what he was talking about, but I mean, if you just opened your eyes just a little bit more. You would have noticed that they weren't moving while, as we're like driving up to them. So like, well, so I mean, we we gotta be honest about that one. Josh may have been still hung over because definitely Josh a, drank way more than the rest of us did. Before that is he a went past possibility because yeah. he was also <laughs> in the back seat of the truck drinking. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we're yeah. I mean, you guys were in your twenties at that time because I was in my early thirties. Cause I had just like had my retirement from oh yeah you would cage been, like, fighting thirty two maybe thirty one maybe yeah I think I was thirty one because that would have been my third year of hunting and I started in in two thousand ten maybe I was turning thirty one yeah thirty two uh, whatever thirty one or thirty two I was kind of like right in that area I know it was I had just got done like fighting the year previous to yeah. archer hunting I was like done um. But yeah, so the first day we, we we have that scenario. Josh is thinking everything's a deer, <laughs> and uh, and he's not hunting either. He's he's helping film. So, but Ian and I we jumped out, and and we covered miles. We <laughs> had the great I okay. Let me back up. I had the great idea to go to the bottom. I was like, dude, they're they're probably down at the bottom, close to the river, where it's nice and cool. It and was a good idea. <laughs> And, uh, so we, we head down, to, we head down to the bottom of this endless goalie and, uh, 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 endless, like it went down for 
what seemed like two miles. It probably wasn't that far, but it seemed like it. Because we we're it, just going down and it down. It probably and down went and down, down, down at a steady, at a steady angle for about a quarter mile. Yeah, with how much we had, because it it was like a zigzag path all the way to, all the way down. We, yeah, we probably walked two miles to get down to the bottom. But I wouldn't say was, I wouldn't I, say that. Dude. We <laughs> probably was we like, probably walked a quarter, half a mile. In. No, I'm thinking like how steep it was and like how much we zigzagged back maybe, and forth. Maybe I'm, I mean a mile, I, three quarters of a mile. I kind of but I, I maybe I know it took us not a a lot uh, less time going up because we didn't zigzag. We just like f this. We're getting out of this bottom and we just boop 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 boop. I think we got picked up. I don't remember going up. No, because remember. Uh, I almost shot. I almost shot that doe. We we went down to the bottom and we came back up to the top. And I'm kind of in front of you, and you tapped me on the back. I remember this because I I didn't take the shot. You you were like, David, I hear something. And I mean, we're walking on Dorito chips. Like it, the ground was so. Oh no 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 crunchy. no no no. So this actually I remember because because I because I heard that thing from very far away, and we were slowly closing on it. For probably two miles. So as a, after we got down to the uh, bottom of the gully, we started um, kind of moving around. We didn't see and we didn't see anything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I hear something. Remember, we were on that hillside, and I heard something. Oops, I heard something at the bottom. So we scooted oh, down, yeah, yeah, down yeah. further into that into the gully, and I, that's yep. when we start. And that's when we are started. Is that we, Is that when we saw the skunk down there too? That might have been that yeah. kind of like in that same kind of. I don't remember the skunk. I remember seeing. I remember seeing a lot. The, those those kind of like those two days kind of start blending together. But well, we did so much in the. Uh, I think we're out there for three days because that was like that. It's Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day weekend. I can never get the ones straight, but whatever that yeah day is for the for September, it was that three day weekend. And man, we did a lot in the first. I would say even the first day. Mm -hmm. So long story short on, on, on this particular stock, um, this doe came up very, very close, but it was super fast. So we ended up kind of like coming up to this point of this hill at the same time. And all of a sudden, um, the deer was like right in front of us. And then it just like jumped away. We had, there was nothing we could have done. No. Um, it's still fun to track that thing for us as long as long as we for did. Our, that was our very first stock we've ever done. Yeah, like ever done ever. And we so, were we were. It took I'm us a while to. Off. It took us a while to kind of get on it because we were trying to find. There's a bunch of dead leaves, so we we're trying to find paths that were either already rooted out that we could go down. Yeah, or we were circling around areas where there wasn't any anything dead. It was just like grass and dirt so we could yeah, slowly it was, start making our way without being being heard it was difficult only because number one ian and i never never really hunted together besides like turkey hunting and you can get kind of get away with some things turkey hunting um but archery hunting when it's super hot the ground is just ridiculous it's so super crunchy and we never really had that before I never had because rifle hunting, it's usually like right when the rainy season starts coming in, coming in and the ground is a little bit softer. You can get away with some movement. This one was no matter what step you took, it was crunchy. So we were trying to find the, the basically game trails that were already like stomped down into the dirt to where we can kind of like be quiet moving through. And, um, that was an awesome experience only because i had never had to hunt like that in my life ever. So I cool. really wish that we had pedometers for that day because i can guarantee oh, you we were over 10 miles oh because i because i remember everyone being like where are you guys we've been waiting and we're like we're we're hunting yeah like we've been on on and off things like all day yeah like i don't know what you what do you what do you want us to do like go oh we didn't see anything and come back to the truck like <laughs> right we're all right. we're out here man <laughs> it's hot <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't want to really want to waste burning my face for the whole entire day. I would like to find something. Well, um, the heat, the heat was intense. Um, I'll tell you this: it was like a hundred. It was like hundred and ten degrees. It was ridiculous. It was not hundred and ten. It, it was. Yeah. It was in the nineties. It was. No, it no, was, no. Um, 
uh, the second day was 105. Uh, oh. And I'll get to that. The first day it was it was in the 90s, and the and then the third day was like 101. And that was when we were like, we were dying. I don't remember being. I remember being hot, but I don't remember being well. That you and bad off. you and I were pretty much done after day two. But <laughs> uh, so after Ian and I get to the top, and we we kind of discuss like what what had just happened and how much ground we put in, and we we weren't seeing any deer. That was kind of when uh, Josh was like, "Oh, well, let's go to my cousin's house." Yeah, and this is Brett. So we we gather everything up, we get something to eat, and we're heading over to Brett's house. And in in this town, it was just a, a little bit of a drive, but you like get out of the town and you're going into um, like more of the country in in that little area. Like he was he was off into he was on 300 acres. So I mean. I mean, his neighbor was super far away, and yeah. his neighbor happened to be his parents. So, um, we were we were um, he was actually taking us to another spot. But when we go, when we're driving up to the house, um, we see these two guys kind of stumbling around, like we thought they were hammered drunk. Um, they actually had like. I want to say it's called Hunter's Hunt Hunt something. It's basically like really bad MS. It's called some. So it's two twin brothers that have this. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah. They have. They have. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like MS. They they don't have like control of of how they move. So we thought they were drunk, and they def, they weren't. They actually have a, a disease that that. Um, yeah, I barely. They can't, I barely remember that. That can't. They can't help. But so <laughs> before we get out, we're like. Oh, what the heck, man? These guys are hammered. Like, what's going on? You know. And then we look over, and uh, Josh is like, "Oh yeah, that's my cousin. He's over here skinning a deer, and he's like got a beer in his hand." And that's like, right. Yeah, yeah. We're like, that's Holy right. smokes, these dudes are hammered. <laughs> and uh, you know, come to find out, they have a disease, and and they were actually the ones that were um, showing us a, a, a private uh, property spot that we were going to go hunt. Yeah. So later on that day, we we hunted this. It's actually a property that meets up to like a golf course and then like um, some other type of like bean field or something that we had access to hunt. But basically, we we hunted like two rows of trees and then it went into like a big patch of trees and then like yep. a huge a huge field. And um, we should have been on them that day because we found signs of them bedding down. We, we were found on, droppings. We were on deer, but it seemed like every single time we would come around a the corner, they were like already walking away. So it wasn't in in the ground was actually green in this area. It was actually green. It was nice and soft. We weren't really crunching around, but we also had a, like eight people. So we not only had myself and Ian, Josh um, Ocasio, who was filming David Sandana, and then we had now we had. Josh, Roy, Brett, and then these two other guys that ended up, they were hunting with us for like a little bit and then they stopped um, mm -hmm. only because they kind of knew like the ground is not that super level. And, and uh, one of them like fell when they were going over this, this thing. Remember when that yeah. dude fell into the water? Um, so they were just kind of like, Hey, we'll just hang back, you know, and you guys can go ahead and do your thing. And we're like, all right, cool. You know, and they were super cool dudes. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I should, see if we can get, I'll get in contact and see if those guys are still around, but they were really cool guys. Um, but, uh, so we kind of split off and, um, I, I want to say Brett and, um, Josh Roy, they stayed back and then Ian and I went one way and David Sandana and Josh went another way. And, um, Ian and I didn't really get into any deer until like the far back of this property, um, we put on like a little bit of a stock on a deer, but then saw that um, David Sandana and Josh were like right on the other side. So we actually like were putting on a stock and then we just stopped. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had the video because it actually shows that. And then um, Dave actually ends up taking a shot at a deer and misses. Um, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit, but. We were probably in that area for the rest of the day, and then we just couldn't make it happen. There are deer all over the place, but it just, nothing happened. 
and then finally we we left and we went back well it didn't it didn't help that uh certain people were playing noises on their phone in the area that we were trying to uh hunt so that was day 2 so so what well, that was also the golf course cuz we, really? we went back so it was so oh, that was no we, yeah it was, you it was and I went to the you end and I went back day. early because our so we had these old so the both of us had old video cameras so Ian was using my old clunky I don't even know it was from like 2002 or I don't even know how old it was but it was like the first SD card one it was like 480i video that you're getting out of this thing and then uh, Acasio had something too his was a little bit crisper like you could tell I wish I had the video because you could tell like which one one was filmed with right. only because the one that was filmed with mine was super grainy and then Josh's was probably like 720 you know at the time it was like that's like the best you were gonna get not even HD just 720 so it was midday when it was it was a little bit later than midday when we left the gully that's when since no one found it and since no one found anything that's when we went to the golf course because it was just starting to hit sundown when we decided to turn up but since we did see several deer out there, the second day we did go back, and that's oh, in the I, morning. That's why I ran the battery dry on uh, David's truck. Yeah, so <laughs> that was a different spot. So that's like so that so that spot is actually on um, public land. Was that the public land one? Yeah, so that one was one that was on public land. It has like that, like right in the front of it, it has like that run down barn or whatever. We were seeing all those snake holes. Yeah. So there's like this huge road, and that's where David and Josh went. They went down the road and came up over yeah, the top. Yeah, that's right. That was and that was the day that Roy was playing, playing freaking the thing. noise and clacking, yeah, so that's, clacking the sticks together. Yeah, thinking that it's like antlers, which doesn't even sound like antlers. Cause so like Ian and I come down, and you know we're both fairly new at, at hunting at this point, but you know we have a sense of like what is right and wrong. <laughs> yeah. So we come back down this <laughs> this thing, and we find Josh, and we're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you just scared a deer away, because I almost shot a doe on that one. So we're in an area that's like, um, it's doe or three-pointer better. Um, and I'm I'm out there just trying to fill a tag. That's yeah. like my whole thing. Like, if, it, if it's legal, and I can fill my tag, and, and uh, put meat in the freezer, that's what I'm doing. Legal. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we, we go and talk to Josh, and we're like, dude. You just messed up like this whole hunt. Like what what just happened? Yeah. And he was like, Oh, I'm just trying to get him to come in and blah 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 and long story short, we we were just kind we of were walked not very away happy kind of about it. pissed, you know, and we're just like, Whatever dude. Well okay, that day what I remember that day actually being really hot because we were still tired from the day before because we yeah. cause you and I definitely did not sleep very well the next that day. So we went out already kind of like on a mission. We kind of had a plan like Okay, this is what worked last time when we found something. Let's kind of stay in that process. And again, we were almost on something, and then it started booking. <laughs> yeah, and um, it was because uh, Josh was he was actually playing elk. Yep, noises. So um, usually that won't really like deter deer, but when he's doing this bugle through his phone probably it didn't sound real like uh, i'm not sure what the deer heard but it, i heard that and then the deer ran so yeah it wasn't good no but so so it was that gets figured up and then he and i are basically just chasing deer all day and then finally we come back we all kind of meet back up at the truck and dave forgets his i want to say it was his uh gps because it was an old Garmin. Yeah, he and, did, I, I believe and it was, he, he, he was said, like, I forgot my Garmin. Yeah, he was like, dude, I sat down when I took crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, dang it. So yeah. Dave and I were, we were just like, all right, you guys go ahead and hang back. We'll go ahead and go try to find this thing. So we dropped our packs. We had our bows, but we dropped our packs and we're heading out there. And I'm like, holy crap, dude, how far is this? Like, I'm dying. Like, I'm like... I might need to just lay down and you might need to go back to the truck and get waters because <laughs> I am burning up right now. And uh, we, we, we find his Garmin, which had two deer sitting on it, like just 
milling around where his he's like my gps is up there and there's like a bunch of deer like walking around and we're like oh of course so yeah we go up and try to put a stock on those deer and that didn't happen so we end up coming back to the truck well at that point ian unannounced to myself and josh why i they either we were charging our phone straight off the truck battery (laughs) that's what happened so for some reason i thought (laughs) i thought you guys locked the keys in the truck but it was more or less we had a dead battery yeah and we had no phones (laughs) so we were just like oh crap but luckily uh brett knew where we were he ended up coming driving by actually just to see like what was going on like hey dude our battery's toast (laughs) yeah but I mean, it's after like roasting in the sun, no AC. Like we were like at the truck for like a couple hours. It's like this is how it how it ends, man. <laughs> this is because we weren't close to any gas stations. We had no. no idea where the heck we were. No, um, and it was hot. And 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 the local guy, Josh Roy, he was new to that area, so he had no idea. He was just like, I don't even know where we're at, dude. <laughs> we're like, great. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, um, I want to say once we got everything going, that's when we hit the, I'm not going to say where we were, but that's when we hit another public land spot. And we were just going to drive around it. Do you, do you remember this? We're all in Dave's truck. This is right after the battery got done. Josh was like, oh, I, I know a spot that's not far from Brett's house. Yeah. And I, he I was like, we can, we can hit up that spot. So like, okay, cool. We're all hydrated. We got some food. We're freaking just, we're grubbing at the same time as we're like glassing this huge, huge field. And I mean, it's, you can drive around the whole thing. Well, except for on you the say backside. You food. Let's, let's, I, I want to clarify this. Garbage. We didn't, we didn't actually eat any food for a problem, like real food. We did not eat any real food as I, I, I know that you and I did not. Maybe someone else made us something, but I don't remember eating anything else besides that jerky trail mix that Brittany made us. Yeah, so in like, like two gallon bags. <laughs> after this hunt was like, <laughs> Ian and I knew like if we were ever to go go like hunting or hiking or hunting or backpacking or camping or whatever, it's like we need these bare essentials. Like we we are not gonna just live off of pop tarts and trail mix. <laughs> like we were dying. Slowly, yeah. we were dying because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll tell you later on. But yeah, as we were going home, it was just kind of like, Ooh! but yes, yeah, we were the slowly. The dying. last time I, I'm, I'm almost hundred percent sure about this. The last time we actually ate a decent amount of food was when I got pizza, and we all had pizza on the drive. That was we on the way over. going home. No. Oh, that was a coming, going, going to. Going to, yeah. yeah. I bought pizza for everyone. And yeah, we had yeah. pizza on our way over. Yep. I th- yeah, I'm I pretty think that's sure probably... that's... We, I don't remember Josh Roy making food for us. Roy, if you're no. listening, you got to make food for your guests, man. Uh, well, we came in <laughs> hella late and then... No, I know. We might have had I McDonald's. Uh, I know we had for breakfast one day, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it was a good time. But so that so then we're we're glassing this this huge field, and um, that's when we saw two two bucks. We saw two bucks, and one we we saw a hunter shoot takes a shot. Um, we didn't know what happened. We saw two deer go blasting down up uh, up uh, through this field, and we're just like. Uh, I think Brett was with us because I think we picked him up at, when we we all went to his house. He dropped off his truck and we went just mm-hmm. basically like quarter of a mile, basically right off his property to this public land area. Yeah, and um, so we watched this guy take this shot and we're just like, oh crap! I was like, well, if he shot one, the other ones there's one of them that's still alive and running. So Brett's like, well, there's this road over here. We can cut them off. And, and try to get into this this um, area. It's basically dried up lakes. So um, during the winter time, they f- this this area fills up with water, and it's like little ponds or whatever. It's they do a lot of duck hunting on this field. But Ian and Dave kind of just like chill back, and they're like, "All right, dude, we're not going." So uh, Cassio and I just start running out of the truck to try to cut off these these deer. 
Oh, you remember this a little bit differently than I do. I remember us driving and seeing us a lone deer. Because no, this will make sense. This will make sense. I'm ju- going to jump ahead. You can talk about No, you're, no You can ahead. talk about your kill. But we were driving and we saw this lone deer kind of just chilling in the field. And there was there was just a half a second and I think Brett w- Brett was with us and he said go you and Acasio dive out of the truck and sprint all the way to this all the way to this deer and you take your shot you kill it and as we, a- after after we dress this thing we take it back to the truck and all of a su- all of a sudden these hunters pull up and they are taking this huge attitude Oh yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, "Hey, can I get? Can I at least get my arrow back? My arrowhead." We're like, "Arrowhead," and he's like, "Yeah, I shot it in the lake." I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that he he wanted to even like I, w- I would be embarrassed. I'd be like, "Dang, I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't know my yardage. I didn't check for my yardage. I just decided to wound an animal." And then not be able to not be able to run after it because there was no other there was no one else. No, and there he, was no one else in in the vicinity. He pulled up out of out of like nowhere. So my my guess is that he shot like a couple fields over and was and watched this thing go over there. And that's like right when we kind of hop and that's when you guys hopped out and took it. Yeah, and he didn't hit the deer anyways. There was nothing in the leg. There was nothing. So, well, not oh oh not no, no. visibly, but when when you when you when you uh, took the, uh... I remember now he had so on the back leg of a deer, there's like this webbing, so there's like this little web spot, like right where the the um, tendon and the bone. Yeah, but it was down at the bottom of the leg, so it wasn't even at the knee, but it was at the very bottom where the hoof is. There's like this weird patch of just it's just skin. Yep, he shot through that. And we didn't see it until we we're actually going to dress, uh, dress the deer because we're looking at yeah. like the big hams, you know. You can the, see this ra- this small razor blade cut right yep. through just the skin patch of the yeah. uh, bottom part of the leg, um, which we're we're looking at the hams like, you know, if he drew first blood or you know whatever. I don't. It it, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Um, no, but he, even, was, he was upset. Yeah, so we visibly were looking over the deer and we're like, dude, there, you missed. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. But we were able to find, like, well, as we're dressing the deer, we took it back to Brett's house, which wasn't very far, and we're dressing the deer, and it was like this, there's like a skin patch, and it hit that part of the leg, and it's at the very, it's like at the bottom of the legs. And it, yeah, it's actually at the elbow tendon, mm-hmm. but not up high. It's down low, but yeah. There's like this weird, like, flap of of skin so there's like a tendon that goes this way and then the elbow part and then like a there's like a patch of skin and it went right through that yeah. part and i was like it didn't even it didn't even like actually well, it didn't even no it it hit a little bit of, it hit a little bit of the protective membrane on the bone it didn't hit the tendon it wasn't no it, it was, didn't it was do such any a, it didn't it do anything a, it was just like a little blade thing like it was such a piss poor shot like I don't know if he. Well, I, we don't know how shot. far he was. We don't know how far he was. Number one, just because we just saw this guy pop up, take a shot, and then two deer ran. Yeah, but isn't the whole entire thing is to try and make the most like ethical kill you can possibly make? Yeah, but I mean, every hunter is not the same. You know, um, not everybody has the same views as as we do. Some people are just like. Well, fl- yeah, but flinging, my, my fling and arrows. No, I know, but my point is, don't be a jerk about it. That's my, yeah, that's my thing. I mean, looking back at, it, I mean, it was a long time ago. Looking back at it, uh, I mean, we had everybody was there looking at the deer, and we didn't really see anything. So it was just like, dude, I shot this thing, double lunged it, like, yep, I killed it, and it, it the the actual kill itself was awesome so Acosta and I go sprinting down this hill and let's say that this like air area here sorry if you're listening to the podcast which this isn't recording now but I'm gonna get the sound through here <laughs> oh yeah I can sp- splice it I noticed it like two minutes in I was like dude I keep on forgetting to hit record but it records through there so 
we're good. <laughs> but let's, uh, so I'm, I'm describing like this little pond kind of area and there's like all these little hills. So the deer actually comes through these hills and Acasio and I come to the top of one mm. and we're just behind one single bush. And, and well, I am actually, Josh actually stopped when the, um, so there's just long grass. Yeah. He stopped in the long grass and I kind of made my way through this, these little like dried up lakes, made myself on top of this hill. The two deer come through. The first one was definitely smaller than the second one. So I let that one pass through. And then this one was probably about 20 or 30 yards behind that one. So I draw back. So this other deer is like over here to my right at like 20 feet. And then the, the other deer comes through and he's at like 30 yards, man. First freaking archery kill. And it was my largest buck to date. It was awesome. And it's like a, they call it the, in that area, they call it a stump deer. They say it's like a hybrid of like a blacktail and mill deer, but it looked like a mill deer to me. Yeah. So it's a mill deer. <laughs> so it was my first mill deer, my first archery kill. And it was awesome on day two. And it was, it was a hot day. We were going through the trenches. <laughs> Seriously. Like for real, like we were in trenches and it, I mean, it was an awesome hunt and I'll never forget that. And and you were there for my very first archery kill yeah it was it was fun it was really fun so dave this guy shot at like i don't know how many deer i know two i know two for sure but there might have been a third or a fourth in there but so we come to find out because dave at this point he was just like i'm not even shooting at deer anymore he was like my hunt's over, so the next day we pretty much just packed up and left because Dave was just like defeated. Yeah, he was. He was. He was defeated. <laughs> he was so, not. He was not in a good mood about it. Yeah. So <laughs> he's. Just, you know, he was hitting deer with arrows. Yeah. The arrow. So um, uh, we filmed this one where Ian and I were done. We're cutting there. Him and Josh are kind of like pushing deer around these big old fields and stuff, and Dave's <laughs> yeah. taking shots at these deer, and he's missing, and we're just like, "What the heck's going on?" And he was like, "No, I hit that one, I swear." We put the the camera in slow motion, and the arrow came out of his bow completely sideways and started to straighten out and smacked the deer sideways. So his cam. So at the time, uh, Dave had a, a Matthews like a single. Uh, it was like a roller wheel at the top, and then like the main cam was on the bottom. the 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 wheel on the top was canted over, so his timing on his bow was completely off. Like yeah. the 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 um, the strings needed to be fixed to cant that thing back straight. So every time he would pull back his bow, his top cam was tilted off to the side. So when he would shoot, it was so bad. The timing was off so much, and he had just had new strings put on. But I think he had shot it so many times, and usually you have to have it like retuned after that because the, the um, strings and cables will stretch. Yeah. So it was like, it would be the cables that would be on the on the cam. Uh, he needed to have that re redone, and he never even thought about it. He was like, "Oh man, this thing's good to go." We shot it the day before, or the night. So we had our headlights on and we're shooting the target and he was hitting the target just fine. And then the next day done Bo did not shoot good at all. All the arrows were coming out sideways and we never knew that until we, we looked at the video. Yeah. I remember actually that arrow flying way more straight, but the problem, but it was like when it hit, it came in at like a weird tilted, but also like off to one side, mm -hmm. which looks, looks really funny when you watch it in full speed because what it looks like is <laughs> it looks like the arrow just hits the deer and then just <laughs> just actually hits the deer and it flips over like like the thing has a force, like field. A force field yeah because ian and i were actually super close to one of them yeah we saw it and we were like, we were like what just happened like because what, on our what just because happened it was quartering because I, I believe it was quartering towards us a little bit and from the angle that we were mm-hmm and we heard it hit, and we watched the arrow just flip, 
it seriously it like flipped over oh, yeah. the deer, and yeah. we're just kind of like, "What happened?" We at first we kind of looked at each other, and then we looked at the deer because it stood there for a second, like, "Am I okay?" Yeah, and then it ran away, and we we looked at each other again, and we we're just kind of like. <laughs> Does that deer have a force field on yeah. it? <laughs> like, we kind of said it almost at the same time. And it was just... Now, like, like if if we were running around with, like, weird things going over heads, it would have just been, like, question marks just popping out. <laughs> it would just be like, what the heck? Now, I have a story that I don't think that you were a part of. I'm not going to tell the whole entire story. Um, but uh, I think it was just me... And Acacio and Sandana. Actually, you, everyone, may, everyone may have been there. But Sandana is raging. So this is right after the deer um, had, the, had the force field. And Dave is like... <laughs> Dave, Dave Sandana is noticeably pissed. <laughs> Hold on. Before we get into that, we're going to take a quick break. Hold on. And tell your story. All right, because because I remember this perfectly because I was dying, I was dying on the inside because there's only so many times you can watch a man just start breaking internally before it's like, oh, this guy, he's not happy, <laughs> he's hurting right now. But uh, as um as we're driving uh, as we're we're driving along, there's there's a deer in some like public field, and. <laughs> Sandana hops out of the truck, grabs his bow, starts run, starts just kind of booking onto it. Once he gets onto the, uh, once he gets onto the public land, and he finds this thing, he shoots at it, and it's it's in a perfect view of the truck. Like, oh yeah, you yeah. can see you can everything. See, yeah, you can see like, it, and it's up up a hill, and as he lets loose the arrow, the arrow's flying, and it's flying straight. The deer does one of these. Oh yeah, Matrix. Matrix, dude. this freaking arrow. I remember and I remember that. Sandez just uh, he's he's like this, literally shoots the arrow. <laughs> and he's just looking. <laughs> like, just, like he can't believe like what just, just happened. He's he's frozen and I just watch him go. <laughs> I think that silence. was silence. I think that was the last shot he took. <laughs> it was silence. <laughs> Comes back to the tr- <laughs> comes back to the truck, puts his bow in there, and we just there's yeah, no right. no one says no one says a word. There's no joke. There's no one. There's some like s- awkward s- silence. S- there's some awkward silence and sniggering because we all saw what happened, and Santa <laughs> just off to the truck. Yep, and and it's like eyes forward. Yep, <laughs> and it was like a while before I was like, hey man, we probably could have got that arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like no, yeah. I, I think there was some expletives, and he said something about the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. The, oh man, I don't think Dave will ever forget that. I don't think I he'll won't. ever forget that. I won't. I, 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 I wish he was here. We'll have to bring this the, up. One of the chief stories of uh, that whole entire trip. It was hilarious. <laughs> and I think on the way back, we were. We were chuckling. Oh about yeah, it. and he After... was—he was all—he was like, "Yeah, man, I can't believe that thing just freaking <laughs> matrix my arrow." And I was like, "Yeah, man." Ian and I was like, the first thing we said when that happened was like, <laughs> "Did we just see the matrix?" Like, yeah. Not only did we see the future of deers with shields, inter- <laughs> internal body shields, but we also saw the matrix. Happen so it wasn't—it wasn't like one of those it jumped the string type things because it—it was on the side of a hill, bro- completely broadside. And it, I mean, it was a string jump. It did do that, but it went down and like bobbed and weaved. So it wasn't like a, a down and then run. It was a down bob and weave around the arrow and then it took off. And we we're just like, holy crap. Like, you know how boxers, they do the, they do the, the ducking drills under the rope. It's oh yeah. Up and under. <laughs> yep. It was just, it was just like that. Neoed that thing. Just <laughs> it was that was just our trip. That was just our trip. So like, but someone got something. Yeah, man, shot my largest buck I've ever shot. Someone got something. That's all we can. And I and I only shot one arrow. 
and it went through. Yeah, it did. It, <laughs> it, it did what it, was it continued to. through. Yeah, it was a good shot. And um, don't yeah, you still man, have that, that was, don't you still have that arrow? Mounted the, on yeah, the, the arrow is on. on. So on I the arrow, other. yeah, I air, I uh, euro mounted it, and the arrow is actually on there. And um, yeah, that's really cool. A rose is on there too now. Uh, that was uh, from Will's um, like ceremony of life. Uh, because he was supposed to be there on that hunt and couldn't couldn't go because of uh, you know military stuff. So yeah, um, yeah. So that was kind of like dedicated to him, and it always it always kind of pe- peed him off. <laughs> that he wasn't able to go, and I shot a big old buck, and he was just like, "Dang it, I should have been there." <laughs> he was like, "That probably would have been me." <laughs> <laughs> Will would say, that. "Right?" Will would say, "Yeah." That. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that was an awesome time, and and uh, a memory that I'll have for the rest of my life. Oh yeah. And I was, I I think it's awesome because you know you got to share that with me. Same with Dave and and Acasio, and you know. Uh, yeah, we'll probably be telling this story when I'm can't move anymore. I remember that one time. <laughs> there's only one. There's only one hunting story that you've told that I desperately. It keeps me up at night that I wasn't a part of it. What's that? It keeps me, it keeps what? me up at night. Man. Okay, I need to know what this is. It, it's it's every time I think about it, I just start dying. And that's when uh, you were telling me that uh, Charles Jackson got. <laughs> Got whipped in the eye by a so, branch. So, um, <laughs> there's a, a gentleman that it, well, I used to work with, and I actually helped train him. Uh, he was actually one of my students in, in MMA, and um, he was really interested in, in hunting, which he went out. He got a hunting license, and he wanted to know, like, you know, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. So, I took him out scouting one, one time, and uh, it was actually back behind the shooting pit. I was like where I shot my very first deer was back behind the shooting pit. Mm-hmm. And, and so I take him to this area and, um, we're trudging around. And if you've ever been in Washington on the West side, it's very thick, like sticker bushes. So I would say, uh, blackberry bushes, definitely blackberries. Yeah. Seven or eight feet tall. And then, you know, just the, the Douglas firs and all this, trees and stuff and it just it it's thick it's like walking through um i don't i don't know it's thick you can barely see through the crap well i i'm walking through and i'm pushing through um this area and i said uh charles you got that stick so usually when we like have a stick that we're like pushing through the next person behind us usually will like kind of put their hand on it as you're pushing through so they don't get smacked in the face I don't think I went through this with him at all because maybe he's never been in the woods before, but I went pushing through and all of a sudden I hear this curdling (laughs) scream, which I can't really do on here because you probably blow your eardrums out, but it is like a, "Ah!" (laughs) and and I turn around and he's like rolling on the ground (laughs) with his hand over his eye and I'm just like, oh, son of a bitch. (laughs) And he's just like, and he's just rolling around screaming. And uh, I couldn't stop laughing. (laughs) I died laughing. At first, I'm just like, hey, man, are you okay? And you're like, you gotta ask if they're okay at first. Yeah. And and, and I'm like, move your hand so I can, you know, like a child. Like, move your hand so I can see if your eye is gone, Yeah. number one. And and it, it like hit him underneath his like cheek or whatever. And, uh, and, and he's like, is it okay? I mean, obviously it's all red, you know, yeah. cause it probably like, it probably did like clip around his eye, but oh, you yeah. can tell it was like a good, a good scratch, like under his eyeball, but on his cheek. And I'm like, dude, you're fine. Get up. And I'm at this point, like if I start laughing too hard, I, I, I'm on the ground. Like I tumble over, I'm on the ground. If I'm laughing that good. Yeah, the legs stop working. Yeah. I'm on the ground. I'm the same way. <laughs> and I was on the ground, and I'm cracking up. And Josh, he was a little bit in front of me, and he was like, "Dude, what happened?" I was like, "Dude, you'll never believe this." And he's cracking up. He's on the ground laughing. And then, yeah, it was just a thing. And uh, Ian and I worked together, and so did uh, Cosio. Oh, I got yeah, I got to hear about this. And uh, this is great. <laughs> 
we we come back and I'm telling Ian about it and he's like, "Dang it, man! <laughs> I should have been there." And uh, yeah, it was. It there's was that one, funny. and then there's the one where you said that uh, Roy Boy was falling down the hill, but he wasn't saying nothing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> He, he, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, how do you, how are you falling? Like, like, you know, when I'm falling, I, I, I make a, oh, <laughs> I make a noise like, Hey, I need, I need it. I don't just stare at someone. <laughs> they can gestures at them. So <laughs> we're, we're, this is the same day. This is the same weekend. Yeah. So how many people did you take out there and hurt? <laughs> well, uh, four. <laughs> Um, so, uh, our other friend, Josh, who we call Roy boy, um, he was, was, um, trying to step over some deadfall and I didn't realize it. And he's like, and I'm like, Hey man, are you okay? And he's just kind of like doing one of these things. And I'm like, are you all right? And all of a sudden it's like falls over and I'm like, what the heck just happened? He's like, dude, I was trying to get. Try to get your hand. And I was like, well, why didn't you say something? I didn't even know you were falling over. It was like so slow motion. It was just. Oh, jeez. And you just fall over. I was just like, what in the heck just happened? Gosh. Yeah, that was fun. And that was, I was still fairly new. I want to say that was, um, that was my last year rifle hunting. Was that, was that, was that one? When I, when I took people out to, um, one of the spots that I shot my first year and I took Josh out there too. And he almost got, when he was rifle hunting, he almost yeah. got shot his first deer in the same, almost the same exact spot. Um, it, the deer, deer, um, the, it came in, it was a, a small buck and there was just no shot. And then just kind of, there was nothing we could do. We just had to watch this deer, but yeah, man, lots of fun trips, a lot, a lot more to come. Hopefully you'll be able to start coming out and enjoying some of the outdoors with me again and get your hunting license. And if not, man, just I don't know coming if out. I don't honestly know if I'm going to do, um, I honestly don't know if I'm going to do the hunting part. I consider myself a person who uh, is a person of necessity. I can still buy groceries. It's not the apocalypse yet. <laughs> I know how to dress. I know where to. I know where to shoot. I know how to butcher. Like I know how. I know the whole entire process, and I'm confident in yeah, doing well, the whole I mean, entire process. I just you, for right now, you're just not interested in in the, in hunting, in the hunting part of it. No, I like. But I do like you I do, do. You do like going out. Oh yeah, you yeah. Go out, you've gone gone out with me. Yeah, I do. I know. I really, I really enjoy. I, I enjoy scouting. Yeah, but I plan to do some uh, backpacking. Uh, this year well that's pretty much all mike and i do when we go scout we park the truck and just and then we'll set up camp wherever wherever we end up landing and Mm -hmm. then set up camp and then keep on going around and eventually get back to the truck when it's time to leave yeah so we do that quite a bit that'd be fun you should come with us on that one when we do stuff like that it'll be pretty fun we'll see we'll see if my schedules ever allow me cleared up (laughs) Dude, when I'm not busy, no one wants to do anything. And as soon as I'm busy, it's like, hey, I got this, and I got this, and I got this. Or you, for some reason, you always are asking me over when I'm, like, either sick or I'm, like, engaged in something I can't, like, Well, usually you're over down. You're over going to um your buddy's house over in Eastern Washington. Eastern I think that's Washington? Brittany's brother or something. Oh, no. We haven't been there for... A while. For, for a while now, yeah. Yeah. We've been... We've been too busy, like especially with uh, me starting the new job. Yeah, yep. Ian's over and there with the COVID. credit union with me and doing good, dude. Yeah, yeah. Getting sick sucks. The COVID sucked because I had COVID, and right after COVID, like literally right after COVID, and COVID, I got the uh, RVS, the respiratory virus. Ugh. Yeah, so I was like double double screwed. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, thanks Ian for for coming, man. We're yeah, gonna call you. it a night and uh, get some grubbing. But uh, everybody, thank you for listening. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, thank you for tuning in. And hopefully you subscribe. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you are not a subscriber, hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. So uh, you know every comment is great. So please leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, bell for notifications. And let's see, we have some discounts 
uh, this is the first podcast with our new discount from Phelps Game Calls. Use Ridgeline 10 to get 10% off of your purchase at Phelps Game Calls. They've been a sponsor for us since we started the podcast. So thank you, Phelps, for that. That's awesome. And then we have, let's see, the Crazy Elk Company. Use Ridgeline 20 for 20% off. And then Ghost Scream, if you want to get some nice sauces or barbecue sauces or something like that, go to ghostscream.com and use Ghost 20. But uh, thank you, everybody, and have a good night.